for the big fat quiz of the year. A show so big and fat that even Jamie Oliver thinks it's beyond help. <laughs> if you haven't seen the big fat quiz before, it works like any normal pub quiz, just without the annoying quiz master who thinks he's funny. <laughs> well, that can't be right, I'm still in it. <laughs> You can play along at home, uh, it's dead easy. All you need is a lavish set, a prime time slot on Channel 4 and six celebrities. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's meet our teams. First up, two of the toughest stand-ups to have emerged from the gritty working men's clubs of the North. <laughs> it's Alan Carr and Michael McIntyre. <laughs> Next up, we have from Gavin and Stacey, it's Ruth Jones, and from the Three Musketeers, by the looks of things, it's Jonathan Ross. <laughs> And finally, two cool characters who listen to bands you've never heard of, only watch films with subtitles, and wear fashion so cutting edge they're already rocking the Naughties revival. It's Noel Fielding and Richard Iowadi. Yeah. I'm guessing, as is tradition on the Big Fat Quiz, you've got team names. Mm. Alan, Michael, any thoughts on a team the name Marcus for you two? What about Posh and Specs? Posh and Specs. <laughs> Chatty and Fatty. <laughs> yeah, I think Posh and Specs does it posh for me. Posh and Specs. Posh and Specs, are you happy with that? Let's do it. Go oh. Posh and Specs. <laughs> Jonathan, Ruth, yeah, what about a name for you two? We want to call ourselves Wagner. <laughs> yeah. Not Team Wagner, not no. Wagner, not Wagner. 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 <laughs> That's good. Yeah. No, Richard, anything? Right. Like, what's happening? T what's, uh, what's happening? Team. What's happening is we're thinking about team names. Like, yeah, we okay, had a name okay. for a team. I thought the moccasins. The moccasins. Which I quite like. But then I thought we could soup it up. We could be the electric moccasins. <laughs> Sound like a psychedelic cool band. Cool names for bands just trip off your tongue, don't yeah. they? The electric moccasins. The, yeah, the electric moccasins. Or Robson and Jerome. <laughs> 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 Which one are you? Yeah. Well, Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> you, have you had a good year? No, Michael, you had a good year, didn't you? You wrote your, your autobiography. What's it about? <laughs> I did, I wrote it. Did you make anything up? Or was it all true? Well, I didn't... I know this is hard to believe. I didn't um, get a lot of women before my wife. And uh, so I, I, I... It looked so bad. It basically looked like I'd only ever slept with my wife. So I added some pretend women in. <laughs> And they didn't exist, and my wife won't let it go. <laughs> Every night she keeps saying to me, Who were they? And I'm like, darling, I made them up because I didn't sleep with enough girls. And she, she comes to it every day. Was it Janet? So I don't know who <laughs> Janet is. <laughs> so I got in trouble for sleeping you with fiction. You make up women's names, don't you? Janet. To be honest with you, as soon as I said so Janet... You want Benice, Rio. <laughs> Alan, have you had much experience in lying about sleeping with women? No, but uh, I can have a go. <laughs> Rio and Benice. Rio and Benice. <laughs> But, well, the big news for you is you're going on tour again next year. Yeah, I'm think... back on tour, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Someone's slow hand clapping. <laughs> Jonathan, for the year, what, what, you've been writing comic books, right? Uh, no, I've been doing that, and I've been doing some special and stuff, and I'm doing some stuff yeah. for... Uh, I'm doing... Well, I can't really talk about what I'm doing next year. I'm doing this, I'm taking over a lot of shows on, on Channel 4. Eight out of ten cats, the big fat quiz. <laughs> 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 Picking up some shows, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ruth, what have you got coming up this year? I did a biopic about Hattie Jakes, which is coming out soon. I like Hattie Jakes. Yeah, a lot of people don't know who she is. People under 40, a lot of them just don't know. But are you under, you're under What are you? I'm under 40, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's hard to tell. You could be 500 years old because you look like a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> no way anyone would know for sure where you come from. <laughs> You do look like kind of a, a, an undertaker from the sort of turn of the century. <laughs> Which is a good look for a comedy panel show, I feel. <laughs> Cheers people up, this look. <laughs> I think you look incredible. Jim, have you ever been remotely experimental with your, your clothing? Because you Experimental? Always... This you... has got a curved collar. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, you're, you're a yeah. properly dressed young man. Thank you. Properly attired. Well, I look warm. <laughs> I like the way that you said to them, what have you been up to when it gets to us to go, well, how's... Yeah. I like your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, um, I have show yeah. business, no. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, uh, it's exciting year for you. You directed your first film. I have, yes. So it's Submarine. It's out in March, It's, it's right? called Submarine. It's out in March. I've seen it. It's very good. It's amazing. There's no submarines in it, though, but it's no. very good. <laughs> yeah. Are you worried people go hoping to see a submarine and come out disappointed? I'm worried no one will go. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of their interest in naval policy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... 
You can see why I've got Rich on my team, because yeah. he ends punchlines with naval policy. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Welcome to the niche corner. Yeah. <laughs> right, everyone's here. We're going to start some big fat quiz action after the break. Yeah. Welcome back to the big fat quiz of the year. If there's one thing we can be certain of, it's that the year started with January and February. Let's remind ourselves what happened. Full body scanners showing naked images of passengers were introduced at all airports. It's changed the way I answer the question, anything to declare. It's been really cold. <laughs> and I've got a tiny penis. <laughs> Vernon Kay admitted sending flirty texts to five women. Vernon knew it had to stop when Jason Manford tried to Skype him. <laughs> no, that's not on. Yeah. Did you get a call as well? <laughs> Is no one safe, Jimmy? <laughs> Jason's <laughs> one of us! <laughs> He's allowed to twank without us making jokes about it. Is twank the official word? I just like it? saying it. Twank. <laughs> I quite enjoyed it when he did it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Toyota had to recall four million cars because of faulty brakes. Toyota's famous for its hybrid cars. The front half is a coffin on wheels and the back half is a death trap. <laughs> well, of course, it wouldn't be a quiz without questions. Eyes down for January and February. OK, question number one. What better way to start the show than with a question from the legendary Will Farrell? Hi, Jimmy. I'm giving it a lot of pizzazz right now. Can you remember the beginning of the year? Probably not, because you're drunk all the time. But it was cold. I mean, it was so cold. Well, it wasn't cold for me, because I live in L.A., but man, was it cold. Now, can you tell me why the cold snap got three well-meaning members of the Thames Valley police into trouble? OK, you know the score. You've got to write down the answer. Will Farrell there asking you a question. The cold snap got the police into trouble. Right. Uh, what happened? Did snap. There was snow everywhere. The police oh, were doing something in the snow. Oh, hang on now. This is coming back to me. Inappropriate for someone in uniform. Have a guess. Come on. Was it sexual? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I like the thought, though, that it's snowy out, shall we, lads? <laughs> Touch up a snowman with a strategically placed carrot. <laughs> I watched the snowman with my son, you know, the animated thing. Yeah. We're walking in that. Because yeah. you're supposed to watch that at Christmas. Mm. He's five years old. It's the most depressing piece of film I've ever seen in my life. He dies. The snowman dies. And my child's cried for an hour and a half all year. Dora the Explorer hasn't had so much of a cold. And now I'm watching the snowman dying at the end. He doesn't die, he melts. Yeah, but he's dead. He's made of snow. <laughs> it's just all year we watch TV and people, you know, Peppa Pig. If Peppa Pig came on and just went, I've had it, and slit his wrists. <laughs> I wouldn't watch that. So, Michael, well, well, how did you deal with this, with your little boy all upset? What did you say to talk him through this? Well, everything I do in this month revolves around Father Christmas, so I threaten... Yeah, I tell him to do stuff, or I threaten that Father Christmas won't come. <laughs> <laughs> or I threaten to phone Father Christmas. I'm phoning Father Christmas! <laughs> and do you have pretend conversation with Father Christmas? Oh, yes! Uh, I've been on a call waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. OK, footballers were in the news for all the wrong reasons this year, but can you tell me what's just happened in this photo? Oh, yes, I know. It's that bad man. OK. He's a lovely man. Oh, OK, get something down. I'm going somebody right, bridge, and I realise his name. <laughs> Noel and Richard are really our sporting <laughs> experts this year, I fear. <laughs> exactly like a Do you one. use that handkerchief, Heather? Do I use that handkerchief? <laughs> yeah. Uh, sometimes it's Jason Manfred calls. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as a, as a surrender sign. <laughs> <laughs> OK, this is Yosemite Bear. Take a look at this hunk of beef. Oh, wow. <laughs> Vanna! <laughs> That's a bit, yeah. He got very excited about something this year and became a YouTube sensation as a result. What was he so excited about? Oh, well, look... That's he got really way. excited about something. Why Massive that internet clip. So that looks like it's something that you would hook so onto a or wait. Time now, panellists, for another guest question. It's over to the lovely Nicole Scherzinger. Hi, Jimmy. Now, I've met a few divas in my time, but nothing compares to the tantrums Gordon Brown used to throw when he was in number 10. Can you name three objects he allegedly threw at his colleagues? I met Gordon Brown once. Do you like him? He threw a cup at me. <laughs> <laughs> we were having coffee and... Oh! <laughs> I met him for coffee and he blew froth in my face. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> Stayed on my eyebrows all day, I looked ridiculous. 
<laughs> I'd rather him throw things than, you know, when he tries to smile, that... <laughs> That's the beginning of that advert for strokes, isn't it? <laughs> Alan, Alan, you shouldn't joke about strokes, cos if you ever have a stroke, you'd be laughing on the other side of your face. <laughs> That advert's frightening, though, cos they talk about the smell of burning toast. If you have a stroke, then you smell burning toast. So every time I smell burning toast, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. Is that your main concern, is that you'll be embarrassed yeah. if you have a stroke? In Camden, yeah. <laughs> you have to go in the stocks if you have a stroke. <laughs> but can you imagine me watching that stroke advert thing? It was like, I had all the symptoms. You limp down one side, and I'm like, blurred speech, and I was like, oh, you know, maybe... Maybe I'm not camp, I'm just having a really long stroke. <laughs> <laughs> OK, has everyone finished? Have you got any answers? Can I just ask, yeah. are you related? <laughs> yes, he's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have some answers. OK, so Will Farrell asked how some policemen got into trouble during the cold snap. OK, Alan, Michael, what have you got? Building an offensive snowman. <laughs> Do you think they built an offensive snowman? Yeah. Well, what sort of thing did you have in your like mind's eye? a snow eye? slut. <laughs> a snow slut? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'd only put one stone for the eye so it looked like it was winking. <laughs> Jonathan, told me through, told me through your well, we didn't. We genuinely didn't know this story, so we thought, what did he get in trouble? So either snowball fight or doing a wee. Doing a wee, going out and doing a wee in the snow, maybe doing patterns, their names, maybe spying each other, having a good time. <laughs> what a detailed guess, I like it. And what have you gone for, Nolan Richard? They well... They kill people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that would certainly get them into it. trouble, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be a spot to bother. Yeah. I did try and write it like a serial killer as well. <laughs> well, mission accomplished there, Richard. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think they probably took their trousers and pants off and then ran around holding hands and catching snowflakes on their tongues. <laughs> but Richard grabbed the pen first. <laughs> OK, well, let's hope that continues happening well. throughout the show. <laughs> Richard grabbed that well, pen first. OK, let's see well, it's, easier. Right. it's easier if I just show you. This is what they got okay. into trouble for. These are officers of the law you're watching here. That is a riot shield. This is your tax money being spent. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> That's the best use ever of a riot shield. That's isn't it? Yeah. Why, who was filming that? They must have known someone was I filming know. it. They must have thought this is fine what we're doing. So yeah. many rapes and murders occurring behind them <laughs> while they frolic in the icy. <laughs> Oh, well, it's easier to catch criminals when it's snowing, in fairness to them, because they've got the prints. They can just get... There's been a break-in, we'll just follow those. <laughs> not sort of tax dodging, though. No, no. <laughs> 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 like collar crime. Yeah. Intellectual property crime. <laughs> like that, Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, you haven't thought this through. It's really... <laughs> OK, okay I asked on. you what had just happened in this photo of some footballers. What did you all think? Well, I think we've got this one right. Yes, you've, you've said... Uh... Well, you've said exactly what it is. <laughs> well, they didn't shake hands. You can see it's happening right there. <laughs> it's one of the easiest questions I've ever been asked in my life. <laughs> he missed his hand because he, he slept with his girlfriend. You just have to have eyes for this <laughs> Ruth knew this immediately. If she didn't know the details, but she knew some of it. Well, Ruth, what, you've written an essay. Oh, oh that's that guy, um, Bridge, isn't it? And then I realised... He's got his name on the back, so... And wasn't... then she said the other man, Samsung, who we believe is... <laughs> <laughs> Samsung, which had an altercation <laughs> of some sort. Yeah, I said the one in blue had a bit of a go with the wife of the one in white. That's pretty close to the exact right answer. Nolan Richard, you went for... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, uh... A bumming. <laughs> No, could you uh, just tell me who had the pen for this answer? <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that, that is wrong. The correct answer is Wayne Bridge refused to shake the hand of John Terry after the tabloids reported that Terry had an affair with his ex-girlfriend. In brackets, a bumming. <laughs> You know, he's watching telly and he's like, oh, I love the big fat quiz. Come on in, darling. Come watch the big fat quiz with me. Oh, yeah, John, I love all that. <laughs> and then they sit down there. That's probably more offensive to them. Than <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey, are they old big fat quiz with you? <laughs> I was just going to say, I think bumming sounds like it's quite a fun word, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it yeah you try living with it. <laughs> Oh, 
OK, I asked you what uh, Yosemite Bear got so excited about. What's your Oh, part? I know this one. You know this one? Yes. Oh, he well, found his to... keys. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't know for ages that they were on him. <laughs> <laughs> They're around his neck all the time. Yeah. He was like, ooh, where are my keys? And he looked all around the mountains. <laughs> and then ultimately he went, I found them! <laughs> he is balancing the moon on the back of his hand. <laughs> No, Richard, what have you got written? Richard's written this, but I can't even read yeah, it. No, I, I, He's... I, I drifted off in the middle. <laughs> He's, what, what's yeah, the middle so word there? It's meant to be saw, uh, but um, I, I got confused. He I was just saw thinking... a rainbow colony. Colony, yeah. <laughs> OK, and you've gone for Jonathan Roof? Well, no, I, know, I think I know this because um, my kids are showing me this internet clip, which is double rainbow. And this is a guy, and he's obviously camping or something. He's out, he's a wild man, as we can see, and he... I think he's filming it as well, and he's, he does seem to be like he's a little bit high. And I, he sees a double wing I think camping is an excellent description of what this guy's doing. I, I'm going to show you the clip now. This is what this guy became an internet sensation for. Have a look. <laughs> oh, my God! Double rainbow all the way across the sky. <laughs> mm. It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's so intense. I think these those keys are for a box of rainbows and he's unlocked them and let a couple. <laughs> And it clearly says on the lid, one at a time, not <laughs> And he went, oh, my God, two have gone out. It's going to sit on the lid. <laughs> oh, so intense. <laughs> OK, uh, Nicole Scherzinger wanted to know which items Gordon Brown allegedly threw at his colleagues. What did your put? Mobile phone and then a pen. OK, lovely. Uh, Jonathan and Ruth, you've gone for...? I, will, I thought maybe a shoe. Ruth thought a telephone. Mm. OK, and uh, Noel and Richard, you've gone with...? Satsuma, Live Wasp and Nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over to uh, Nicole Scherzinger and find out what the real answer was. <laughs> Did you get it? Gordon Brown allegedly threw a mobile phone, a stapler and... Dun -dun -dun -dun, a laser printer at colleagues <laughs> while he was Prime Minister. Jimmy, if she had actually said either Satsuma, Wasp or Nightmare, <laughs> it would have been the greatest moment of all our lives. <laughs> <laughs> she said he threw a da 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 at someone. <laughs> Isn't that which I, which I believe is a slang for Satsuma Wasp. <laughs> Yeah. How can you throw a live wasp? A, a dead wasp, I get, I get that. Well, you Pick pretend it. you're throwing it, but you, you're in cahoots with a wasp, right. and you go, in a minute, <laughs> when I release you, just fly straight towards his head. <laughs> and then it goes there. So it looks like you're throwing it, yeah, but, but really... It's flying. Yeah. Why do you think it's weirder throwing a live wasp than a nightmare? <laughs> <laughs> Right, that is the end of the first round. The scores are, so far, Alan and Michael have an incredible one. Uh, Jonathan and Ruth have two points there in the lead. Noel and Richard are lucky to have one. <laughs> Time now for an ad break. Or as I like to think of it, a chance for you to see some of the things you got for Christmas advertised at half price in the sales. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the big fat quiz of the year. And as the intimate text message of January and February turns into the awkward public apology of March and April, <laughs> let's remind ourselves of what happened. Ricky Martin came out of the closet. In fairness, he'd only popped into the closet to find the perfect leggings to go with his crop top. <laughs> Party drug, methadrone or meow meow was banned. The drug was originally sold as plant food, which explains why my daffodils are so paranoid. <laughs> I'm not sure what Meow Meow's actually like, because I haven't tried it. I'll ask Noel. Noel. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, actually. <laughs> but apparently it's bad for you. Is it... Didn't tell us that when we were taking it by the shed load, did they? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite weird, though. Have you ever smoked drugs through a cat's anus? <laughs> I saw a double rainbow. 
<laughs> right, time for some more questions. If you've seen the Big Fat Quiz before, you'll know that every year the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neasden put on some rather unconventional Sorry. school plays. What I want to know is, what news story are they adorably acting out here? Take a look. Okay, so write down, write down on the answer there. Time now for a say what you see puzzle. Concealed within these pictures is a headline. Here's an example of how we do this. Okay, so that's Michael Mack in Tyre. See how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Mack in Tyre. Okay, that's just the example. What I want to know is what news headline from the year is this? Oh. It's not as easy when it's not your actual name, is it, Michael? <laughs> Can I have that picture, though, to take home? Yes. <laughs> it's a little oh, treat for you. Thank you. Oh, okay, so say what you see. Oh, it could not be easier. OK. Time for another guest question. This time it's over to the one and only Jack Black. Hi, Jimmy. Here's a question for you big fat quizzers. Which major crisis did boffins attempt to solve using nylon tights, golf balls, Rubber tires and human hair. Which <laughs> Very confused about that question. <laughs> okay, so what did scientists try? There was a, a, basically a disaster, and oh. scientists tried to solve ah. the problem with golf balls, human hair. They, they, they tried everything. They tried a ah. bunch of different things. Totally know it. <laughs> That's got to be right. Yeah. Have a look at this clip. What has this woman just found out? What did he say? You're joking! <laughs> I can't believe this. That is said that. That is, uh, oh, this was, yeah. that is a clip of one of the women that Michael McIntyre claims to have slept with in his autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This year, esteemed historian Dr. David Starkey has returned with another tale from history. Can you tell me whose saga he is recounting here? And so, the romance of the Northumbrian princess and the lusty knight reached its tragic conclusion. Rumours abounded that the knight had topped with wenches in taverns whilst away on tournament. But his fate was sealed when the chroniclers revealed that he texted lewd images of himself to another, clad only in his codpiece. <laughs> Distraught, the princess fled to the colonies, finding solace in the arms of Will I Am and a certain acrobat named Derek. After rough with the plague, the princess sought absolution with the holy bishop Piers Morgan, exiled the knight, and returned to her rightful place in the nation's hearts. I'm pretty confident we've got all of these right. <laughs> Well, let's see. We saw the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School performing one of their unusual school plays. Did you get what it was all about? We thought it was the ash cloud, the volcanic ash cloud, the Icelandic ash cloud. OK, uh, Alan, Michael? Ash cloud. Ash cloud. OK, I imagine you... Noel's Noel Richard? Show. I thought it was my new show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly better production yeah. values, but... So you thought the it's kids of Mitchell Brook Primary scripted. School in Neasden had gone into the future, seen your new show, and done a play about it? Yeah, you make it sound stupid when you put it like that. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Draw was the ash cloud. Was anyone inconvenienced by this? Was anyone stuck anywhere? Oh, I, I pretended I was. How <laughs> was it? <laughs> and there's so many people kept using that, saying, oh, I'm stuck, I'm stuck in Morocco. I'm stuck. So <laughs> people would... <laughs> I said I was stuck, so I didn't have to do any work. <laughs> Yeah, was that when I was trying to get you to do my show? Yeah, that's oh, what I was. Oh, no, I was, I was actually in, stuck in Morocco. 
really were. Yes, I was. Because of that ash. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that everyone got very angry with Iceland over it. I was furious with Iceland. And for a little while, I really didn't like Icelandic people. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like even you. know any. But just the idea that they wouldn't control their volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so stupid. You know you've got a volcano. Put a cork in it or something. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to be able to block these things it up now. Be right off their chicken tikka lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you what headline was represented by the picture puzzle. What did you put? We put R tug rocket eye sanitary towel. <laughs> well, that's what it is. You told us. You just read them what they are. <laughs> jo Jonathan, Ruth. Oh, we got it right. Apple. Apple launch I sanitary towel. <laughs> <laughs> You've fallen at the final hurdle there. <laughs> Just talk, talk me through what's, uh, okay. what's going on now. Oh. What, what have you gone with? Mouth pull rocket eye parcels. <laughs> parcels. <laughs> parcels. <laughs> yeah. I don't want those sort of parcels coming through my letterbox. <laughs> Jimmy, can I ask you what, what the answer is? Yes, it's Apple launches iPad. They, they can I actually right. just say that that is not... that does not work? Uh, <laughs> Apple... No, stop right there. What did you say? Apple. No. Yeah, it, no, it's... Do you know no, the way that you say... No, that is not a fruit. Do you not... <laughs> do you not have an Apple? <laughs> oh, can I... Look, I'd like a bunch of Apples. <laughs> We've done that especially oh, for you, because that's yummy. How... Oh, have you tasted this Apple? <laughs> On oh. a banana. <laughs> How are you talking? You know no, it. No, 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 no such Arpel. thing as an apple. <laughs> if I went to the apple shop and said, Hi, I'd like an apple, <laughs> they, they wouldn't even let me in. <laughs> oh, that is a void question. Yeah, and if you true. don't get rid of it, I'm walking. <laughs> and I'm going with him. Yeah. <laughs> if you two still might maybe the campus walk out. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Jack Black. Uh, wanted to know what scientists, boffins, tried to solve with nylon tights, golf balls, rubber tyres and human hair. Uh, Alan and Michael, you've gone for... BP oil spin. And, and they tried to use all of those things in order to stop the oil Yeah, from... to plug the gap. OK. <laughs> Jonathan Ruth. We thought that they were making a dress for Lady Gaga. <laughs> uh, if you were trying to plug the oil spill, you didn't just put a couple of golf balls and some tights down there. <laughs> you were trying to do it with a top hat. Did you hear about that? That <laughs> top hat? I, I don't think it was top actually top a top hat. hat. <laughs> it wasn't like someone in spats just went, that should do it. Yes. <laughs> it's, um, what have you gone with? How to lower the cost of dentistry. <laughs> with nylon tights, golf balls, rubber tyres and human hair. I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm not saying they did it well. <laughs> OK, let's go over to Jack Black for the answer. Hey, Jimmy. The answer was, of course, the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Turns out that cement worked a lot better than golf balls. Who knew? If you like the way in America they try to make it seem like it was our fault, mm. because BP used to be a British company, and it's not... I don't think it's even owned by British yes. people anymore. I think it's mainly American. Yes. And every time it was on the news, Obama yeah. would say, British Petroleum, yeah. British Petroleum. Yeah. We don't have a go at them for sending Hannah Montana over. They should get us... <laughs> When it comes to British petroleum, no longer British. Exactly, they should have put her down there and tried to clog it up. <laughs> I, heard that it, um, I heard that it cost BP £15 billion pounds in petrol. That's the bad news. The good news is they got 380 trillion nectar points. <laughs> That's enough to buy the whole of Asda. I, I reckon that would still only get you a toaster. You ever collected nectar points? Yeah, well, I used to, and you don't get anything. You could be there for a year and you go, oh, a CD, yeah. thanks. Oh. No, that's not true. I got a, a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> How much petrol did you go through? It wasn't a Henry, though, was it? Oh, no. No way. There's no. not enough nectar <laughs> no. points in the world. <laughs> Hoover with a face on it. <laughs> OK, I asked you what news the woman in the clip had just received. What did you get? Gordon Brown had flagged her off. <laughs> she went up to him yeah. and she, she said to him, Where do all these Eastern Europeans come from? Hey, Gordon, <laughs> where do all these Eastern Europeans come from? <laughs> the answer's actually in the question. It's actually quite an easy, <laughs> <laughs> an easy question. He could have just put that to bed with Eastern Europe. <laughs> um, but no, he really panicked and he called her a bigoted woman in, when he left his oh, microphone on. Like, yeah. He left his mic on in the car. It, it uh, could have then... been so much worse, couldn't it? I mean, you know, he's under that amount of pressure, he gets into the car, the mic's still on. It could have been much worse than a bigoted woman. He might have said big-titted. We don't know for sure. <laughs> Imagine Would if he tried to cover it up by going, no, no, I said big-titted. 
<laughs> yeah, but then he drove past her and threw a printer at her out the window. <laughs> So, Jonathan Ruth, you went with Bigoted Lady. Bigoted Lady, we know that, yeah. And Noel yeah, Richard, you went with? She's got to present, never mind, the bloodshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is Phil Jupiter's before he puts his makeup on. <laughs> I think they should make everyone keep their microphones on all the time, OK? <laughs> Just to catch me, because it's funny. Oh, most Did you people hear? don't have microphones on all the time. <laughs> No, you exist in TV. On, yeah, let's keep everyone's but... microphones on. <laughs> and it's so showbiz. <laughs> what I like is when he, because he let he was in the car, and then he he had to they had to turn the car around and go to her house, and he spent a, an hour with her in her house, and then he came out of the house and went, I've just spent, I've just spent an hour with, uh, with uh, Mrs Duffy apologising and <laughs> I'm a sinner and that's the end of that. Then he got into his car and drove off. When I was watching on the news, I was just praying that he had then left it on again. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody bitch, that fat bitch. <laughs> Didn't offer me a cup of tea. Uh, Gordon, you're up. Turn the car around! <laughs> I would have liked him to turn his microphone on again and again until he moved in with Mrs. <laughs> the most embarrassing thing was it wasn't even a clip on Mike, it was a handheld. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? What a <laughs> Okay, Dr. David Starkey uh, recounted a tale from history. Did you work out what he was talking about? Yes. You, you did. I think I might have, yeah. No, Richard, what have you got? I can't remember her name, but I put Geordie Chocolate Eyes. <laughs> I'm so tempted to give you that. That's sort of... And you know what no, I mean! I know exactly what you mean. Because she's now gone back to using her... Because she was Cheryl Cole, yeah. but now she's gone back to being Cheryl from Girls Aloud. Oh, really? Uh, which is her maiden name. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if, after this, if everyone just referred to her as Geordie Chocolate Eyes? <laughs> and that became officially her name. Geordie Chocolate Eyes? But she has late got chocolate eyes, though, so fair enough. Oh. <laughs> It's actually quite a strange bunch on the extract, don't they? Because when you look at... Because you look at... She has got chocolate eyes, which I hadn't uh, noticed one. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Um, <laughs> but Simon Cowell, his head is impossibly flat. I mean, it's like... It's, it's actually cuboid. His head is like... It's like someone's drawn a face onto a box and stuff. Like that. I believe they were trying to make a Lego figure of him. They couldn't get the top of the Lego flat enough <laughs> to aim at his head. It's because he sleeps upside down. <laughs> on it. On his head. <laughs> and let's go back over to the good doctor just to have it confirmed. Hello, Jimmy. I was, of course, talking about the fall of the House of Cole. <laughs> oh, Ashley, you fool. You damn foolish fool. Oh, I like that. It's Dr David Sarkey basically going, Oh, you're an idiot. I definitely would have. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> right, let's see how you're doing. Uh, Alan and Michael have five. Oh. In the lead, Jonathan and Ruth with six. Oh. Noel and Richard with two. Oh, dear. <laughs> Right, we've got to take a break now, so for everyone watching on new, expensive 3D TVs, this one's for you. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back for more Big Fat Quiz action. And so we cast off the warm jumper of March and April to reveal the pasty torso of May and June. Let's remind ourselves what happened. After offering to sell access to her ex-husband, Prince Andrew, for half a million pounds, Sarah Ferguson was pilloried in the press. What is it about the fat, greedy, ginger parasite that people don't like? <laughs> taxi driver Derek Bird went on a gun rampage in Cumbria. Typical taxi driver, shooting across a junction. <laughs> <laughs> Footage of Rona Williams' journey to work along the A1 became an internet sensation because this happened. He can you not see it? it? He doesn't know oh, my God. Well, what a great, exciting way to get to work, though, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit like that advert where they have the big stride out the window and he goes and he gets a cluster <laughs> all the way in. You know, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do if that happened to me. I guess just keep driving the truck. Yeah. <laughs> did they survive? They did survive. What happened? The truck driver didn't notice <gasps> that there was a car on the front of his truck. Why did the person filming it not try to help the situation? Why? Because that's a brilliant thing to film. Wouldn't it be lovely, like, like Alton Towers, and when you reach your destination, you actually pick a photo of it? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, <"Woo." laughs> OK, that's question amazing. time. To kick things off, we have another guest question. <laughs> so it's over to Simon Pegg. Hi, Jimmy. Here's a question. 28-year-old Anna Chapman gained worldwide notoriety this year when her secret was revealed. Question is, what was that secret? Anna Chapman. Anna Chapman, what was her secret? 
Worldwide no notoriety. Oh, shit, this one. Okay. From June this year, where could you try a fainting fancy, buy some screaming yo yo, or a chocolate frog? What? <laughs> I knew chocolate frog would wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> From June onwards, you could buy those things, you could test them. Oh, come on, look, Michael. I don't Stop know what the, I really about. don't know what's going on on question two. I don't know. Your mouth is moving and I can't make any sense of it. You might as well be speaking. Iranian to him or something. You've got no idea what's going on, have you? No, fainting fit. Not a fainting fit, <laughs> but a fainting fancy. It's like a really famous thing. A chocolate frog. A chocolate frog. It's a famous thing. All it couldn't right. be a bigger thing. All right. I'm not being patronising, just... I'm being condescending. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Question, what can we say? What is it? <laughs> Alan, Michael, you've got, to, you've got to write something down. OK, OK. So where do you think you, you could have got... Know, you where do you think know. you could get a chocolate frog from? OK. After playing Nicholas Mahout at this year's Wimbledon, John Eisner said he could have eaten 12 Big Macs. Why was he so hungry? Were they Big Mac and Rose that he could eat? Were they Big Mac and Rose stopping <laughs> you? Oh, I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the tennis when the roof shut for the first time. Oh, I accidentally good. lent on the button. <laughs> 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 it did shut and everyone was really excited. It was really boring, though. It just went... Yeah. It took ages and it was like, it's, this is history! And I was like, oh, I'm going to get another pins. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. Uh, in May, there was the small matter of a complete change of government. Let's remind ourselves how it happened. We're going at it all night, all day. That's how we're going to win this election. <laughs> I agree with Nick. See, I, I agree with Nick. See, I agree with uh, Nick. Gordon says Nick agrees with Gordon, and Nick says Nick doesn't agree with Gordon. Someone has just handed me the tape. Let's play it and see if we can hear it. This is just a song. Bigoted woman. <laughs> it's my intention to tender my resignation to the Queen. Her Majesty the Queen has asked me to form a new government. And I have accepted. Once asked what your favourite joke was, you replied, Nick Clegg. And... I, I'm afraid I did oh, once. Right. I'm, I'm, uh... <laughs> We're all... <laughs> Lovely to see civil partnerships in the news. Um, <laughs> OK, that was the general election, but what can you tell me uh, why 600 people in Chester, 200 people in Sheffield and 150 people in Hackney were particularly angry on polling day? You got it? You good? You happy? <laughs> you ready for answers? You got, you got something? I just found some chewing gum under my chair. I was got really angry for about a minute and realised it was me and Russell two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Who's done that? Oh, that was me. <laughs> it's fine. OK, let's have some answers. Let's get some, let's get some answers done. Simon Pegg wanted to know how the gorgeous Anna Chapman made the news. Did anyone remember? We thought she was the stig. <laughs> <laughs> they also think she was the, she was the stig. Yeah, but we meant stig of the dump. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jonathan, Ruth, you've gone for... The sexy spy lady. OK, yeah, she was a spy. You got that Very right? Sexy. Yes. I'm afraid you guys got that wrong. OK, uh, next one. I asked you where you could try a fainting fancy, buy some screaming <clears> yo-yo <throat> and buy a chocolate frog. Noel and Richard. Dixon's. <laughs> we went for Dixon's. <laughs> what do you mean we? You went for Dixon's. Yeah. Dixon's not even still going, is it? Why don't you just put Rumbelows? <laughs> Jonathan and Ruth, where do you think you could buy a screaming yo-yo, a well, fainting fancy and a chocolate frog? I know this. Ruth wasn't sure because she has never seen a Harry Potter film, which I find almost impossible to believe. Or read a book. No, I'm, nor I'm me. pretty sure... What? Nor You're me. in some of them. <laughs> <laughs> some of <the> Snape. <laughs> Was that good? You're very good in them. <laughs> but anyway, Harry Potter Land has opened at Universal Studios in Orlando. I went there in the summer. It is... If you like the books and the film, there's no other place you want to be. You, you went there in the summer? Yes, we had a so fantastic look. time. Drank some butter beer. I drank I, a lot I've, of butter I've got beer. a picture of that. I've literally... Look at that. <laughs> That's really good, really thick. Your eyes look quite odd I there. was drunk on butter beer. <laughs> Alan and Michael, what did you go for here? Piss flaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, well, OK, I'll, OK, I'll accept that. You told me to write something, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like what you say. 
It's not the wittiest thing I've ever said, but I was stressed, <laughs> weren't I? I thought, wait, it's that. Get it's saying, <laughs> write something, write something. I'm very disappointed in you two. Sorry. What, is that not the right answer? <laughs> <laughs> OK. I asked you why uh, John Eisner was so hungry after playing Nicholas Mahout at this year's Wimbledon. What did you all put? We went on, it went on and on and on to... It went on for that. It was, what was the final score? Something like... Okay. Well, it was, it was the longest tennis match in history. Ever. They played 183 games. It took 11 hours and five minutes. They look like a tennis ventriloquist act, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Alan and Michael, did you...? Yeah, we, the we, longest I, tennis we, match. We longest that, match, right. pretty good. OK, yeah. and you went with Nolan Richard? I put... He just had sexy times. <laughs> Is that what it's called in your house? Yes, yeah, 6 o'clock to 6.15. <laughs> we just uh, put an egg timer out. <laughs> and, uh, when the sound's gone, so are we. <laughs> OK, I wanted to know why 600 people in Chester, 200 people in Sheffield and 150 people in Hackney were so angry on polling day. Did you get this? Because they live in those places. <laughs> <laughs> they closed the booths. They closed the booths? Yeah. You've the... got a strange voice, haven't you? Because sometimes it's all high and pretty like a flute. Other times, they closed the booths. <laughs> <laughs> pretty yeah, like I... a flute. Yes, do a high bit. We'll focus on the oh, positive. Hello! See, that's nice. It's a nice voice. <laughs> Alan comes with a range, whereas you're either Guy Fawkes or Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what did you go for, Come Jonathan Ruth? Rain. What did you go for? Hitler. Have the whole range. They were angry on polling day because they couldn't the find talk. a poll. They couldn't, couldn't find a poll. No. <laughs> Noel, Noel and Richard have probably, probably got it. OK, 600 people in Chester, 200 people in Sheffield, 150 people in Hackney. Angry, cos they got bitten by a horse. <laughs> <laughs> the same horse, Jimmy. That horse was busy that day. Biting and galloping around. <laughs> <laughs> My you know sister that? actually got bitten by a zebra. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this feels like overhearing something in a doctor's her... surgery now. <laughs> did, how did the zebra get close enough to bite? We were in France. We were in one of these kind of Oh, France, zoo where the zebra roam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, while we're doing animal related stories, I know someone who went into anaphylactic shock mm. because she was at London Zoo and she has a nut allergy. And as she walked past the elephant enclosure, the elephant reached out and had having recently eaten peanuts, oh. kissed her on the face, and she went... <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I know From her. elephant's trunk. I know her. Do you? Anaphylactic. <laughs> I used to go out with her. <laughs> we met her uh, bobbing for our pools. <laughs> <laughs> I, Jimmy, actually, when I... I'm thinking back now, when I was about seven, a llama nearly ate my hair at the zoo. <laughs> People, I was it? really small, so it and almost is... lifted me off the floor. Oh. It's like... <laughs> the interesting thing about that is that is still how Noel gets his hair cut. <laughs> He's done by llamas. I was absolutely furious. <laughs> I had to be calmed down by the teacher. I don't know what I thought I was going to do. <laughs> I punched a goat in the face once. <laughs> Is that, I could believe that from you. Is that true? I was in a petting zoo with my children and this goat started being too rough with my little boy. He knocked him over and I went, right, and I was looking, I went, boom, and I knocked the goat over. <laughs> and, you know, I'll be honest, this doesn't show me the good luck, but it was, no. a, ba it was a baby goat. <laughs> <laughs> that baby goat learned a valuable lesson yeah. that day. <laughs> I, can tell you, I can tell you the Daily Mail headline is going to be Jonathan Ross punches kid. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at the scores. I can tell you that Alan and Michael have right. seven points. Jonathan and Ruth are in the lead with nine points. Surprisingly, <laughs> Noel and Richard trailing behind with two points. <laughs> so, it's the part of the show where I introduce a mystery guest. I want you, the panellists, to tell me who they are and why they made the news this year. Please welcome our mystery guest. OK, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, Daryl, uh, and he is the owner of the... Uh, uh, I don't want to give it away. Mammal. <laughs> <laughs> He's the owner of the mammal in question. Uh, what I want to know is uh, how, how, how did they I make the news? Say, I'm incredibly allergic to those mammals. <laughs> <laughs> incredibly allergic. Yeah. Well, this is going to be much funnier than even we thought. <laughs> 
<laughs> is the question, what mammal is this? Because <laughs> I might know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm nice about cats and dogs? You stroke them, and that's, that's, that's it. That's the level I'm involved in. That's, that's where this massage is at. And then they just turn over and go... <laughs> Happy ending? <laughs> no! <laughs> Yeah, has he accidentally stumbled upon your relationship with the cat? <laughs> no. <laughs> Was this cat in the news? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, oh, I know! It's not just show and tell, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> I was just going, I've got a friend called Darren, he's got a cat. Stick news. him in the show! <laughs> That'd be fantastic! Has the cat changed its identity or look recently? Because if it's the cat I think it is, I think the cat looked quite differently. <gasps> Did the cat reason. used to be a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Was the cat involved in a clip on the internet? Yes. Does it play the keyboards? <laughs> no. Oh, it's not that cat that speaks that goes, Oh, what's that? I've seen the speaking cat. Don't, don't, be, don't be alarmed, I'm pretty sure that, that only cat happens is amazing. in Noel's head. <laughs> OK, so you've got to write down how you think oh, got the down. cat made the news. That cat looks like he's ready to sort of leap off you at any second now. He's uh, yeah. running you out. You can have a wander around if you want. Well, not if he doesn't want to get punched. <laughs> 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 Everyone finished? Well, without further ado, let's, let's go, to, go to the answers. So, uh, Alan, Michael, what have you got? We okay. think it's the cat that went, was put into the bin. In a wavy oh, bin. It's horrible to say it out loud. Okay. That and Jonathan Ruth? Well, Ruth wrote rescue. the cat was rescued from a bin, which I think shows her in a good light because she immediately cut to the happy ending part of the story. <laughs> but I then feel that it was initially put in the bin by a mad woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, OK, and, and uh, Noel and Richard? Was dropped in a bin. The game's <laughs> right. Was dropped in a bin? Yes. <laughs> Noel and Richard have got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl. Oh. Let's have a clip. If it's not, could you, oh. could you just guard Lola's eyes so she doesn't see? I don't want her watching this. <laughs> Let's have a look and see what happened. Thank you. It's unbelievable. Oh, surely not. Why would you do that? No, no, look, she's mental. <laughs> Look, she's... <gasps> <laughs> it's still shocking, isn't it? It's still... you just... Why do you think she's allergic to them? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you've played this all wrong. I think this round should have been the woman coming out here, then we had to guess who she was, and then Jonathan Ross could have punched her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you played this wrong. That was a much better idea. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Daryl and Lola the Cat. Give them a round of applause. Well, join us after the break, or the cat gets it. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz. It's summer, and the hazy heat, the gentle waft of smoke, and the smell of roasting meat can only mean one thing. Your house is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's remind ourselves of what happened in July and August. The Vatican said that the ordination of women was a sin on a par with paedophilia. Well, they'd know. <laughs> There was anger over plans to build a mosque at Ground Zero in New York. To this day, it remains the most controversial ever episode of Grand Designs. <laughs> right, ready for some questions? Yeah. Of course you are, OK. <laughs> Can you tell me who made an unexpected late-night trip to the Hampstead branch of Snappy Snaps in July this year? <laughs> Come on, you've got to fight back. What for? What for? For, for glory. There's a, there's a prize. There's, a, there's, there's a... no glory. <laughs> yeah, it is glory if you win. Come on. All you right. can do this. We, we try, we're trying hard. Okay, now no, try your hard. You can do this. Oh, look, you Jimmy, can come back. You can make them look like fools. I was on the street. Someone put me in a bin, and then when they opened it, I was here. I hadn't asked. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is how we book oh, Noel Fielding. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at this clip of Boris Johnson. What on earth is he talking about? Who'd have thought uh, last year that we were going to have this thing uh, on, on, the, on the international agenda? This is uh, now, I think, going to be the subject of intensifying national controversy. I know that there are moves to ban it, and I'm under some pressure to say now that we will not have them at the Olympics. I, I, you know, at the moment, I have to say I'm, I'm undecided. It's obviously a very, very intoxicating thing to parp, and people love parping it. I'm told uh, that they are increasingly popular in London. And we're going to have to look at it. All right, so what was he talking about? That's always the question I ask whenever I see him. OK. <laughs> and for our next question, it's over to the stars of Channel 4's Excellent Misfits. Hi, Hi Jimmy. Jimmy. Now, as you know, we all play characters with superpowers and misfits. But can you tell me which unlikely pundit's predictive powers gained him worldwide fame 
during the World Cup. Hmm? Mm. Is his superpower the tight <laughs> purr? <laughs> it's exactly the sort of thing you would guess. It's that crazy. Is it? Lord only knows what they're writing down. Okay. The country was gripped by the dramatic standoff between gunman Raoul Moat and the police, which took a bizarre twist when Paul Gascoigne turned up to try to help. Can you name three things Paul Gascoigne brought with him? Yes. So what did Paul Gascoigne bring along <laughs> to try and help the Ralmote situation? <laughs> OK, and for the next question, it's back to the kids of Mitchell Brook Primary School for another one of their one-of-a-kind yeah. school plays. Welcome to our show about cars. Yeah! This is our secret friend. <laughs> oh, no, now people will know. You were spoiling it. <laughs> Actually, you are allowed. It's me. Yay! 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 <laughs> 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 okay. Answers. I ask you, who took an unexpected trip to Snappy Snaps in Hampstead? Okay, you've gone for Alan and Michael. George Michael. <laughs> Which is the correct? Answer that. That is, that is right. You've gone for John. Well, Michael? we've gone. We've got inside information. George Michael, wham, just in case people didn't remember. <laughs> Yog, because Yog is his nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you find this out? Was it on a piece of graffiti in Hampstead? No, somewhere? Yog is his nickname. What, what does Yog? Does it mean something? I don't know. Yo, Yo, G. No, it's like, Yog. Yo, <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, G. Blood. Yo, G. You're about the least urban person in the world. <laughs> and I know it's your because I've been okay. I'm dropping. I've been in his house when people have called him that name. He didn't know I was there. But, uh, <laughs> no, I was actually, I've been round his house since he came out from his little spell away. That's what I know. He actually phoned me while he was inside. Inside what? <laughs> um, did he say, "Can you keep my moustache and beard while I'm in prison"? <laughs> 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 I just smuggle it out for him. <laughs> no, Richard, what did you go with? Wham bar. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you that. Yeah, I think yeah. I think you knew the answer, clear. Yeah. yeah. Have we got the have we got a picture? Have we got a picture of him? <laughs> is that graffiti done in pencil? I mean, that, is that is that a preliminary sketch? And they're going to see how it is, and then go back. <laughs> <laughs> Do it in pencil first. I'm not sure about it. Is that funny? Yeah, it's good. That's a midget fancy. <laughs> so you're saying? <laughs> Why is that also that of all the shops on the high street? To crash into. Snappy Snaps is the most visible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he chose the shop he was going to crash into. He not wasn't see cruising it. up and down going, which one will it be tonight? <laughs> he definitely was cruising up and down saying, which one will it be tonight? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he was doing. <laughs> okay. We saw Boris Johnson rabbiting on about something or other. What did you think he was talking about? Jonathan, you went for. Okay, no, I didn't go for anything. You can guess which one of us wrote this down. <laughs> and she's shifting uncomfortably even now. Not uncomfortably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruth, you, you, you went with bumming. I guess you didn't know what he was talking about there. I mean, look at, look at his face now. <laughs> OK, uh, Noel, his tiny... Balls. <laughs> They're like bird's eye peas. I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when you see them in the freezer and they've escaped from the bag <laughs> and they've gone in on themselves. <laughs> We're looking at that. <laughs> These tiny frozen balls. <laughs> and they're also green. <laughs> I'm going to have to say you're wrong. You don't oh. get a point for that. Oh, come on. Uh, Michael and Alan, what do you think? Vavuzela. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a lady place? What? <laughs> Vuvuzela. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you say? For JJ? Is that when you decorate your vagina? Is that it? Vajazzling, isn't it? Vajazzle. Yes. Vajazzle. He was talking about vajazzling at the Olympics, making it a sport. The 100 metre vajazzle. I am so watching that. I know. Let's hear from the man himself. I'm not going to diss the Vuvuzela. It's a fantastic thing, you know. 
It's, wow. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful it's skill, though. I, I, well, it's not, easy, it's not difficult. <laughs> uh, Vuvuzela was the right answer. OK. Um, oh, good. OK, the Misfits ask you who showed uncanny powers of prediction during the World Cup. What did you put? Alan and Michael, you've gone for... Octopus. Jonathan. We, we put uh, Octopussy from Germany. Was his name for an extra point, Jimmy? Bluey. Uh, no, but I will take a point away because he was called Paul. <laughs> the German word for Paul is blowy. <laughs> Noel, Richard. Uh, what, what I put with? that German snail, but I meant octopus. <laughs> So, genuinely, that was just a stab-in-the-dark guess, <laughs> and you got to German snail. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know anything about Blowy, or whatever, <laughs> blowy, whatever it's called. Yeah. Good and old Blowy. Why Paul the octopus? Sounds like a dickhead. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Let's go back to the Misfits and find out for sure. The answer was, of course, Paul the psychic octopus, oh. who correctly predicted the outcome of World Cup matches. <laughs> I seem a little bit miffed we didn't know it. <laughs> OK, I asked you what Gazza brought Raoul Moat during his standoff with the police. <laughs> Did you get it? We went for fishing rod, chicken, and lager. <laughs> that, those are all correct. You could have also had a dressing gown. Did he bring him a dressing gown? He, bought, he brought it? him. I, I'm, I'm very I'm amazed that it ended in tragedy <laughs> because he brought him some chicken, some lager, a fishing rod, and a dressing gown. We what? should send Gaza to the Middle East. He's really got some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking outside the box. <laughs> uh, you went for uh, chicken, lager, fishing rod. You've yeah. got that as well. well John, the football as well, but okay. He didn't bring but... a football, but you still get it. Okay. Really Noel and Richard went with remote control parrots. <laughs> <laughs> so is that two separate answers? Remote control and parrots? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be an idiot. <laughs> remote control parrots, Tizer, and corks. <laughs> But he did have two remote control parrots. So this is Paul Gaskell had remote control parrots. Yeah, he's got two. <laughs> so remote is Paul... control parrots. That is massive. That's the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and I looked on the internet to get some, and you can't get them. I don't know where he got them from. I bought them all up the week before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we asked the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School. Uh, to present another one of their unique school plays. What did you think they were acting out? The, the stick. Stick. With the a little stick. baby Richard Hammond. Um, OK, you've gone with the stig, Jonathan? We went Root? with the stig identity crisis. And you went for Noel Barry Richard. Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> Just demonstrate that you can actually do calligraphy with this pen. <laughs> Barry Sheen in calligraphy. <laughs> I don't see how that could be any more wrong. <laughs> OK, well, the answer was, of course, the stig. OK, now for a special bonus round. I'm going to show you stills from three of this year's biggest movies, which have all been subtly improved. Can you tell me what the films are? OK. <laughs> oh, that's hard. Okay. Why would you There's do that, first. Jimmy? Why would you take a beautiful family image and rape it? I think that's better. <laughs> that is better than it was. OK, the second one? <laughs> I should have got that one. <laughs> and the third? <laughs> OK, you get a point here. You get a point for each film. Noel, Richard, surely to God you can get one of those. I'm really glad I'm on Jonathan's team, cos the last time I think I went to the cinema was probably to see Star Wars in 1978. <laughs> OK. Well, without further ado, I can tell you... OK, that was Story Story 3. Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Again, cos they made her forehead big, but mine is naturally like that. <laughs> and the last one from Kick-Ass. I could, I could play a seven-year-old. <laughs> I've got a youthful skin. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what you got. Okay. He's a film director. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Toy Story 3, Alice in Wonderland, kick ass. They've got absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. As have Alan and Michael and Jonathan and Ruth, okay. but he, well, I'm much more impressed right. with you. Well done. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> leave on a high. <laughs> <laughs> Not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you all got those right. Let's have a quick look at the scores. I tell you that Alan and Michael have 16, Jonathan and Ruth are in the lead with 17, Nolan, Richard, seven. <laughs> Join us after the break when we'll be finding out the results of the paternity test. Can't wait. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
So, welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year, and we're back to school with September and October. Let's remind you what was going on. Wayne Rooney was in the doghouse. You know, the doghouse. It's Liverpool's premier brothel. <laughs> Colleen was worried that Wayne was up to his old tricks again, but on this occasion, it turned out to be two young tricks at the same time. <laughs> William Haig denied rumours he was gay after sharing a hotel room with a male colleague. So William Haig's not gay. To be honest, I was more surprised when I found out he wasn't a giant baby. <laughs> right, let's have a look at some more questions. Uh, time for another guest question. This time it's from Big Fat Quiz's BFF, Russell Brand. Hello, Jimmy. I'm sorry I can't be there with you to be on Big Fat Quiz of the Year. I no longer live on a conventional calendar or acknowledge New Year's, Christmas festivities. I've got my own calendar now. It's based on a decimal system. But I have decided to participate in your Big Fat Quiz, and your Big Fat Money spinning career, by asking a question to the people there. Hello, Richard Iwadi. Hello, Michael McIntyre. Hello, Jonathan. Jonathan! <laughs> The question is this. We all know that a pope came to our country this year. I believe it was in, hmm, September. But how did a cardinal cause offence to our people, the people of Britain, by saying a thing that was offended to us? What was the thing that was said? Answer it, remember it, then say it. I'll do a funny version first, but then say it. <laughs> God love him. OK, so, so what did a cardinal say? <laughs> A cardinal said something pretty bad about this great nation. I know it. I told him, and he didn't believe. He couldn't believe that the cardinal would say such a thing. I well, know. I know. <laughs> Do not. I? I just turned that into like what? some gossip. Didn't <laughs> yeah. I? I'm shocked by it. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Out of order. Okay. So have a look at this five-star shithole. Can you tell me where it is? This is from the brochure. That's hard, wasn't it? What is, is that a sink? Here's another guest question. This time, it's from Jamie Oliver, everyone's favourite chef. Hi, Jimmy. Last year, I spent a whole load of time teaching Americans how to do something a bit different with food. Can the teams tell me how one American put 40 pounds of Argentinian grilling steak to good use at a big award ceremony? Oh, did he say <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> how are you doing, Richard? You all right? I don't know. I drifted off a bit, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, I didn't, it, yeah. Didn't it? Generally. Well, do you think Good, they yeah, just checking in. Just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'll tell you what, um, actually, it's very hard in our place to get the cold water pressure up. Do you know what I mean? In the shower, and that's it's just a nightmare. <laughs> On that, it's fine. <laughs> you know, as in, it's very hot, the shower, and we actually have to run the hot water just to, you know, take the edge off. <laughs> this isn't for Quite you, lot. This is just the... Pro <laughs> pro just checking in with how Richard's doing. Apparently, the cold water pressure, <coughs> yeah. not great, but we'll try and... I guess we just have to, you know, soldier on. Sorry, I, I just made the mistake of genuinely responding to your question, which I thought was... A... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was an inquiry. I always imagined you as a bath man. You have showers? <laughs> Are you high up? Is your flat high up? It is, but the cold water... <laughs> It can't reach high enough. Well, the cold water the might water. be in a tank above, even. We don't have a tank. I took the tank out. That might be the... That might be the problem. <laughs> I took the tank out. Why would you take yeah. the tank out? Because I wanted to put a big bean bag. <laughs> Rather yeah. than a water tank? Yeah. Can you not get a plumber? This, uh, this is what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I can get a plumber, but I want a reliable one, Ruth. Get no, a Welsh we. one. Get a Welsh one. I live in London. No. <laughs> I have a plumber. I have a plumber for you. Has anyone got any clue what we're meant to be doing yes. at this point? <laughs> we were just about to solve it. Richard, I have a plumber. He's got his own plumber. <laughs> OK, time for another oh, yeah. Say What You See question. <laughs> there will be some pictures. You will say what you see. No one will talk about baths or showers. <laughs> no one. <laughs> OK, time for another Say What You See question. Can you tell me what the headline is? Oh, not oh, one of these again. <laughs> oh, for okay, God's it's... sake, Jimmy. <laughs> Come on, get something down. Okay. Oh, oh, my God! God. <laughs> Almost inadvertently done it. OK. Can I just say, someone on Facebook is pretending to be me and they put a scan, a picture of a scan on the other day and said, oh, James Corden sent me a picture of his baby scan, as if I would do that. Oh, that's so outrageous. So, can I just say... I'm well, that was me, Facebook. sorry. Well, stop <laughs> it! <laughs> I was told by someone on Twitter to get a life, and the person who said it called herself the real Anne Boleyn. <laughs> 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 to be a dead 
Tudor. <laughs> Okay, Russell Brand asked you how a cardinal caused offence ahead of the Pope's visit. OK, it's Alan and Michael, what, did you, what, what do you think the cardinal said? He said that we were like a third world country. Jonathan Ruth? I didn't have any clue of this at all. I thought it was probably to do with condoms, because he usually is harping on about that and saying they're a sin, isn't he? OK, Richard and Noel, what did you go? Uh, we wrote Iggy Pope. <laughs> and I drew a Pope and then crossed his face out. <coughs> Couldn't look at his stupid face. And I said, the Pope said, we will wank. <laughs> OK, let's go back to Russell Brand and see what the, uh, the answer was. The correct answer to that question, now that you've indulged yourselves in ridiculous and unnecessary banter, probably writing <laughs> things down, doing drawings. Me and Noel Fielding started that. No one used to do funny drawings before me and Noel Fielding done the first time we won, which we won, quite rightly. The answer is that Cardinal Walter Casper said arriving in Britain is sometimes like arriving in a third world country. He said that about us. And they don't want us to bring down the church and all religions. Happy Christmas! <laughs> Everyone. Yeah, where is he now? Sad, really. <laughs> I asked you uh, where these yeah. grotty photos were taken. What did you have? Premier in York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh. Lenny Henry lives there. I know. <laughs> he, he was coming out as I was going in. <laughs> We thought, was this in the, this in the news? <laughs> this is where the Commonwealth Games, the hotels that people are staying for the Commonwealth Games. This was the, 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 the basically the, the athletes' village uh, is where these photos were taken. The athletes, and this was about a week before or ten days before the games were due to start, and they were in this condition. Uh, Noel and Richard, where did you think these photos were taken? We put Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, but not no, Mike. No, not you. Bublé. Bublé. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cross that out. You've not been there. <laughs> Jamie Oliver wanted to know which American made use of 40 pounds of steak at an award ceremony. Anyone remember? Lady Gaga's dress. Wonderful. OK, Jonathan Ruth. We said Lady Gaga's... We put Lady Gaga Gaga. Because uh, you got excited by the thought of Lady Gaga, her dress. Okay, and Noel and Richard. But what did you put? I put he grilled it first off, <laughs> and then I put Gaga bra underneath. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go over to Jamie and see what he thought it was. Of course, it was Lady Gaga. She wore an entire dress made out of meat. It's not that weird because actually, I've got a nice pair of pants made out of pork. It's normal. <laughs> so you all got that exactly wrong. Well, well done, yeah. everyone. Was it actual? It was actual beef, mate. It was just... actual beef. Yeah. But the thing is, when she was sat down, right, did she have knickers on? And if she didn't, that means she was actually sitting and her fufu was on some actual beef. <laughs> <laughs> it was apparently a, an anti-war statement. Oh, I see. Yeah, statement. that's clear, wasn't it? OK, next up uh, was the Say What You See puzzle. What did you get? Alan got this. Go, yeah. go, go. Alan Cricket got this. Cricket match fixing scandal. Wow. Oh. Come on. OK, ah. Jonathan Ruth, you got that? We got cricket match, fix scandal. Fine, oh. that will do. Uh, Noel and Richard? <laughs> <laughs> we got cricket match, then we ran out of steam, so I just drew Jimmy Savile. <laughs> That's uncanny. I think it looks like That's him. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> OK, uh, let's have a quick look at the scores. Let's just quickly check in. Alan and Michael have 19 points. Jonathan and Ruth are just ahead with 20 points. Noel and Richard have got eight. <laughs> OK, now, as a special treat, we've got a bonus round all about this year's television. Before the invention of TV, people had to entertain themselves by watching talent shows or dancing competitions. <laughs> all that's changed now, of course. Let's have a look at some of this year's highlights. Just a small town girl. Starship with your cannon. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Ah. This. I'm the dog time. It's your ultimate housemate, Brian! The name's Sherlock Holmes and the address is 221B Baker Street.
OK, you saw a clip from Ultimate Big Brother there, which featured the memorable housemates from across all the series. But what improbable explanation did everyone's favourite screaming halfwit, Nikki Graham, suggest for fellow housemate Nadia's apparent grumpiness? And the clue is, it was improbable. <laughs> OK. You've you got that? OK. Love Junior it. Apprentice I aired this year, you. giving a group of teenagers <laughs> the chance to kickstart their business careers. But what reason did 17-year-old Tim Ankers yeah. give for not making enough cheese snack boxes? So it was yeah. Apprentice? Oh, the Junior Apprentice. <laughs> it was Junior Apprentice. You know, the young... Did you not see it? Junior it was Apprentice. Yes, it was, it was incredible. Great. Alan Sugar was hiring children. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to hire children. No wonder the economy's fucked. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If you, because like they're looking for the, the next wave of entrepreneurs and businessmen, but and you are both brilliant comedians. <laughs> but if you didn't do that, could you get a job? You think what would you do? I can't imagine you having a proper job, Michael. Have you ever had a job in the real world? Am I on the Jonathan Ross show? No, no. <laughs> no one's on the fucking Jonathan Ross show anymore. <laughs> I've had jobs. I took raisins off the back of a lorry for fruit and fibre. You took raisins <laughs> off the back of a lorry? Is that why they grow They're in boxing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I won't brew me lunch. Do you know what I would do if I wasn't what I do? I would like to marry people. Like, be a registrar. That's nice. I think they're bigamist yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I did work in a bakery for one day. <laughs> but well, the boss went off, and I, when he came out, I was lying down eating cakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best thing about that is I know 100% absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> so true, it's brilliant. Okay, all right, have you all got something for these? Final one. Take a look at this clip from this year's I'm a Celebrity. Oh, You're all right, yes? Absolutely fresh. Good girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll explain exactly what's going on, no, OK? I feel really ill. No, no, no. Oh, 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 let's oh. get Bob in. <laughs> hey, that was uh, Gillian McKeith there from uh, How Clean Is Your Poo, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever nonsense she used to present, the made-up doctor. Um, <laughs> Made up. I'm more of a doctor than she is. Anyway, <laughs> Gillian McKeith there. But can you name three things she smuggled into the jungle in her knickers? Oh, I know one. And when I say smuggled into the jungle in her knickers, that is not a euphemism. Genuinely, she smuggled stuff into the jungle in her knickers. <laughs> Have a guess. Come on. Okay. All right. Here we go. I wanted to know what explanation Nikki gave for Nadia's grumpiness in Ultimate Big Brother. Did anyone get this? We thought period. She might have thought she was menstruating. OK. And that's because you gave us a heavy clue there. I did give you a clue there, Jonathan. Interestingly, Richard and Noel decided to ignore that heavy clue. <laughs> and they went with... Hay fever. <laughs> I've never watched Big Brother, and look at, I didn't, look at her face. Why Just would I want to watch that? <laughs> <laughs> she is hilarious. All right, I'll show you, I'll show you what she said. Board. <laughs> have, have a look at it. You know what Nadia's like when she's trying to talk? It's almost like she kind of talks quite loudly. And there was only a plate, do you know what I mean? But in this house, it sounds you crazy, doesn't it? Maybe naughty is on her period. <laughs> yeah. Unlikely, but maybe. <laughs> Michael, you went with uh, pregnant. No, well, <laughs> you said she was on her period. <laughs> Yeah. And you, you spell that he how? cheated. <laughs> spell that our way. <laughs> no, OK, you put pregnant. OK, I asked you for the explanation Tim Ankers gave for his poor cheese-selling abilities. What did you put? We put child labour is wrong. I <laughs> <laughs> put a statement rather than the actual answer. OK. Um, oh, <laughs> incredibly. Oh, Jonathan and Ruth, you've gone for... Too, it was too windy. I love that show. He was making it out there. When they asked him, I'm sure that's the yeah. answer, and he said it was too windy, which had nothing to do with making cheese rolls, but obviously it was the thing he remembered for his nice day out. OK. <laughs> Noel and Richard, you... Yeah. Incredibly. <laughs> he said wind, and I added windy pops. pops. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that situation. There's no way he could have done it under those conditions, it was, I mean, it was, it was gale force, didn't it? Gale force. It was and very blustery. The, the problem was he had crackers and they were just flying out like hail. Because they are lighter than you think, crackers, they're very, aren't they? They're lighter than wind, is the problem. Uh, let's have a look. 
I know it's like a small thing, but it was like a wind tunnel behind us. I was doing the, the packed lunches, but then I, you know, there were customers waiting, so I thought it's more important to Didn't get Didn't you sell customers. them straight away as soon as you made them? Yeah, they were going. Mm. Well, why didn't you make any more then? I wanted to make more. Who stopped you? The customers being there, there weren't enough people in the store. Oh, not the wind now then? Oh, oh and the, yeah. And the wind, the wind also. Yeah. <laughs> wind is my least favourite weather type. <laughs> That is my best thing ever. Wind is my least My favorite. least favourite. I mean, we've all got a top three least favourite by the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was amazing. OK. All right, did anyone get what Gillian McKeith was smuggling into the jungle in her knickers? OK, Jonathan Ruth? Oh, yes. Spices. Spices. Herbs and spices. What's her name? She's called Gillian McKeith. Oh, I thought it was Rod Hull. No, she did not. <laughs> no, Ruth just said to me... Jesus. Ruth didn't say she did she put them up? <laughs> Ruth! Just. Well, it seems like the, that's what they do going through airports, isn't it? Well, we're finding all about your past now, aren't we? <laughs> uh, Norman Richard, what did you go with? Uh, Sean Ryder. <laughs> <That's> a lot. <laughs> and you've also gone with Richard? A clock and rubies. <laughs> Alan, Michael, what did, you, what did you get for this? Well, we did salt, George Foreman, lean, mean grilling machine. <laughs> 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 Oh, the expression yeah. on her face, you can see, look. I think she's left it on by mistake. Oh, yes. <laughs> I did. Well, you could have had, you could have had a miso soup, dry and liquid, stock cubes, rock salt, dried herbs, nettle tea bags, chilli and garlic powder. In Gillian's defence, all of those things should be stored in a, a dry, cold place. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a really dirty, ready, steady cook, isn't it? <laughs> what have you got? Well... <laughs> <laughs> OK, now, because you've been so good, we've got a special guest for you. Oh. One of this year's breakout stars. It's Mr Louis Spence. Yeah! <laughs> nice to see you. No worries, no worries. Thank you. Louis, you look uh, fantastic as ever. Yeah, I do, don't I? Of course I you made do. an effort. I'm like you. I made an effort for you. Yeah, yeah. But come on, it's meant to be the new year, isn't it? A bit of sparkle or something, you boring <laughs> fun. <laughs> Can I ask Louis a question? I was just wondering if you had to come out to your parents. <laughs> Babe, I was born out. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I just came out like this. <laughs> 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 okay, now Louis, you're here for a reason. Yeah. You're gonna, as a as a as a as a gift to the nation, you're gonna enact one of the biggest news stories of the year yeah. in interpretive dance. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And <laughs> our panel have to guess what good. the news story is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna step back because I imagine this is gonna get physical. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Louis Spence, everyone. Music. Uh, judges' comments? Powerful. 
<laughs> okay, you've got to write down what was the news story. I mean, that was an incredible piece of, it was more of a piece of theatre. Remarkable. Beautiful, Louis. I was moved. I tears. was very moved. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I know what Alan's thinking. <laughs> that was my favourite bit. Happy. <laughs> See, I don't need to. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I've got a bit, I've got a bit dizzy. Okay. I can't believe Louis Spence is here. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, what have you put? Jane McDonald leaving loose women. <laughs> <laughs> it was that bit across the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I thought that's Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John, Jonathan and Ruth, you we were... uh, we think this was Wayne Rooney's baby being conceived, <laughs> and then over here it was being <laughs> born. <laughs> and it was How did excited they... by the, I'm the signing internet. autographs. Well, I mean, our last our last hope is is Noel and Richard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to touch the pen. <laughs> You thought um, it was Downton Abbey? Yeah. <laughs> you thought that dance was about Downton Abbey? Yeah. That one. So clearly, he was <laughs> the Chilean miners. Oh. How oh. did you not get... Did you get that, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. They all got that. I thought right. that was an incredible piece of interpretive dance. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Mr. Yeah. Louis Spence. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. get any better than that. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, no, we're going to do scores. <laughs> Alan and Michael have 20 points. <laughs> Jonathan and Ruth are in the lead of the century. Noel and Richard have nine, nine points. Well, Louis has promised to polish up my Charleston. <laughs> so we're going to have a quick break. See you in two. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. As the fireworks of November career uncontrollably into the hedge of December, let's remind ourselves what happened all those months ago. George W. Bush released his memoirs. They remain to this day Spellcheck's greatest ever achievement. <laughs> <laughs> students took to the streets to protest at increased tuition fees. Students will find it very hard to find a job if they were involved in the rioting. Or if they weren't. <laughs> Ireland's economy effectively went bust. The situation has got so bad, they've put in place a special task force to start double-checking the ends of rainbows. <laughs> Let's crack on uh, with the final part of the quiz. Yeah. Right. Of course, it wouldn't be the Big Fat Quiz without a news flash from Jon Snow in the Channel 4 newsroom. He's got a special bulletin here based on one of the year's biggest songs. Over to you, Jon. A deranged aristocrat and her ample-booted companion have complained to the authorities after being bombarded with nuisance phone calls. The pair issued a plea for the prankster to stop calling, stop calling, <laughs> revealing that he had caused a series of interruptions to their daily routine. Most annoyingly, ringing them in the club when they're sipping that bub. When asked to comment, one of the victims, famed for her eccentric attire, said, I'm kind of busy. Stop phoning me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> OK, so what song is Jon Snow going on about? Come on, it's a big hit. Oh, is it? We don't, we, we've lost, there's no point. <laughs> okay. In December, angry activists launched revenge attacks on websites such as Amazon, PayPal, Mastercard, and Visa. Who are they defending? Oh. Iowardi's on it. Okay. <laughs> well, I think Jonathan's got it, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Have a look at this amazing piece of Taiwanese news footage. Can you tell me what story is being reenacted here? Ying国威廉王子宣布 <laughs> okay, what new story was that? Okay. Radio 4's James Nocte landed himself in hot water after mispronouncing someone's name and accidentally swearing in the process whose name did he get wrong. <laughs> Don't write what he said, because he said a bad thing. I'll just check. <laughs> on what Richard's written before we say anything. I'll just have a little check. I didn't, uh... 
Yeah. I don't know whether we can say that. <laughs> okay. Ask me, ask me what the Welsh word for first is. What's the Welsh word for first? Cuntav. <laughs> There's nothing rude. wrong with that, no. nothing wrong with that, because that's Welsh. Ask me <laughs> what the Japanese word for Jimmy Carr is. <laughs> Let's move on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next one. Have a look at this picture. What is it and why was it in the news? Oh, what's that? Baked beans. beans. <laughs> <laughs> It's a sign from you, isn't it? Is this a close-up shot of what was in Julian McKee's knickers? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Boris, so we've reached the see. final question of the year. Who better to see us off than Seth Rogen? Have a look. Hi, Jimmy. I got a question about one of my all-time favourite heroes, Mr Dick Van Dyke. In November, he made the news after falling asleep on his surfboard, he drifted out to sea. Can the teams tell me what unlikely group of heroes came to his aid? So, who saved Dick Van Dyke? <laughs> Sounds like a comedy song, somehow. <laughs> OK, let's get something down. You ready for the final answers? Yeah. Jon Snow reported on one of the biggest songs of the year. Did you know what it was? Lady Gaga Telephone. Lady Gaga. Oh, like Beyonce did nothing on that track. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you go for, Noel Richard? We put Gaga. Yeah, Gaga. That's Pony about, Gaga, that, yeah. that will do. That's, yeah. uh, that's a terrific okay. effort for so you. So, points all round, then? I think near enough, yeah, why not? OK. Can we have uh, 25 points for that? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I asked you who the people attacking Amazon, PayPal, MasterCard and Visa were protecting. Uh, what did you put? I didn't know the actual name, but he's like that WikiLeaks man, isn't it? Julian Assange is the guy's name, but WikiLeaks man will do. Uh, WikiLeaks will do, Jonathan WikiLeaks. and Ruth. And you've gone for Nolan Richards? <laughs> OK, so you've gone for Wikipedia. It wasn't directly <laughs> under threat. Um, but that man has had to put up an appeal on the page. I don't know if you've seen it. Yes. And, uh, what is that appeal about? He just needs um, uh, someone to babysit for him. <laughs> uh, He's dominating the whole page. Yeah. He, he, he can't get a good sitter. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> well, no point. OK. I asked you what story was being reenacted in this piece of Taiwanese news footage. Did you all get it? Prince William's engagement. To Kate Middleton. It was, of course, the royal engagement. When he did get engaged to her, I saw an interview on the BBC and the, the bloke that was doing the interview said, Did you say yes? And I just thought, of course she <laughs> fucking said yes. You idiot. <laughs> She's got a massive ring on. They're here in the studio. It'd be embarrassing if she said no. Are you... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you've all got that right. I'm looking for. I, I'm really looking forward to the world wedding. Are you looking forward oh, to the world yeah. wedding? Are you going to look? Are you going to? Oh, yeah. going to watch it? I'm counting Thanks. down the days. Are you going to wear? Something, <laughs> are you going to wear something special when you went to your house? I'm taking Paul the octopus. <laughs> I'm going to smuggle loads of meow meow in my knickers. <laughs> okay, I asked you whose name did Radio 4's James Nockerty get wrong? Hold it, James Nockerty. I thought it was James Naughty. Is it actually James Nockerty? It's pronounced Nockerty, but it's, uh, it's spelt Naughty. Well, Nockerty, isn't it? It's not Nockerty. It's like Nockerty Knock. Nockerty Knock. But no wonder he's mispronounced another name. If his own name is Nockerty, no wonder when he looks at a normal name spelt down, he thinks, oh, it sounds like something else. That's his accent, by the way. He's Icelandic. He got Jeremy Hunt's name wrong. Uh, and you've got to be careful on the radio, haven't you, Jonathan? He switched one letter. <laughs> he switched one letter. <laughs> Two years. Two years, I know. No, it's because he's the culture secretary. <laughs> you mix them up. Sorry, he's the culture secretary. That's yeah. in Jeremy Hunt. Yes. It's yes. interesting because you've written what? Formula One driver from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> James Hunt. Sorry. Let's have a listen. What's happening in the course of the next hour? Well, first I'll be talking to Jeremy Cunt, uh, Hunt, the culture secretary. <laughs> Hunt. <laughs> Broadband. To it's eight o'clock on Monday, the 6th of December. American officials have condemned WikiLeaks after the website published a list of hundreds of facilities said to be vital for American security. Every community in Britain has been promised to have access to the fastest broadband network in five years. <coughs> Excuse me, and Egypt has called in international shark experts to investigate a series of attacks <laughs> in the Red Sea. <coughs> Pardon me, copying that. <laughs> the news comes from Rory Morrison. 
I like the way he said Egypt once he'd really messed it up. He went, Egypt! <laughs> uh, OK, so Jeremy Hunt is the right answer. Oh, Noel and Richard, what did you get for that last one? John Poobum. <laughs> John Poobum so face. Ill. John Poobum. <laughs> Probably for the best, you crossed out what you originally had there, which was... <clears throat> very unpleasant. <laughs> I always thought they should do that at the watershed, because they say that 9 o'clock is the watershed where you can swear. So on the 9 o'clock news, they could go... Doot, 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just to ease you into the watershed. <laughs> I'm Moira fucking Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you've just tuned in, Moira Stewart has changed. <laughs> OK, uh, I asked you to take a look at this picture. Why was it in the news? What did you get? It's a bacteria that eats... It's Gillian McKeith's pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is, uh, that's exactly the right answer. It is a bacteria oh. that eats arsenic. See, I told you. It's a brand-new you. form of life wow. that no-one thought existed before. Oh. And Jonathan and Ruth, you went with? Well, I actually thought they were washed baked beans. We thought it was like a bad health thing, like a salmonella outbreak yeah. in perhaps a hospital. And you're what saying you, it's not for? a top shot of a Kojak convention. <laughs> <laughs> you feel that was an aerial photo of a Kojak convention? <laughs> OK. Seth yes. Rogen wanted to know... This is a final question, final answer of the quiz. OK, final one. Final Seth answer. Rogen wanted to know who came to <laughs> Dick Van Dyke's <laughs> aid when he floated out to sea. What did you put? Paul oh, Polly. <laughs> Well, well, that, I, I wouldn't have put dolphin, but Michael said porpoise. <laughs> I upgraded his dolphin. <laughs> to a porpoise. Yeah, no, porpoise is exactly... What did you go for, no, Nolan Richard? We said uh, he slept with a porpoise with no Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I can't <coughs> confirm that that is the right answer, but I will give you a point for that, cos it's got purpose in it. Got what in it? Will purpose. It? <laughs> you said purpose. <laughs> <laughs> he said purpose. <laughs> Sir, sir, you said purpose. <laughs> Jonathan Ruth, you went with poi, 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 Pushed him in the land. Who, now, who, sorry? Poibuses. So, <laughs> Dick Van Dyke was, for many years, a very heavy drinker and, by his own admission, an alcoholic. To the extent that, and I've read his book when it came out, which was very good, he says that when he went to see Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, you've all seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, it's hard to forget, he sat there watching at the premiere and he couldn't remember filming any of it. <laughs> That's how much he was drinking. He was on a bottle and a half of gin a day. He cannot remember one scene of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. This is the man who we're going to trust when he says, on a surfboard while asleep, porpoises pushed him into land. <laughs> I don't think. He's basically the Hollywood equivalent of Noel Fielding. <laughs> That's what I he's saying. He's did mad. did get rescued out of a pond. <laughs> out of I... a puddle, actually. <laughs> by a starfish. <laughs> It's going to be one of the questions next year if you're going to watch. Me and Dick Van Dyke were in a puddle, <laughs> out of our minds, on Meow Meow. <laughs> let's, have, let's, let's hear from Seth Rogen. Let's get the definitive answer. Did everyone get it? Mr Dick Van Dyke was pushed back to shore by a school of porpoises. That is crazy. Uh, I was actually fortunate enough to have Mr Dick Van Dyke be a vocal coach uh, of mine for an upcoming project, and he taught me the perfect English accent. It goes like this. Merry Christmas, mate. <laughs> Happy New Year. Thank you. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your lot. Uh, let's tot up the final scores. Oh, if you're playing at home, there were a possible 36 points on offer this evening. How did you do? Uh, I'll tell you how the teams did. In last place. It was always going to happen, but a very brave attempt, I feel. Um, well, we're all winners here. Always going to happen. Yeah, but you said purpose. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, maybe I'm the idiot. Twelve <laughs> points. Noel Fielding, Richard R. Wilde is... <laughs> in second place. Alan Carr and Michael McIntyre, twenty-five points. Come on, that's something. We can do that now. But the winners of this year's Big Fat Quiz of the Year, it's Jonathan Ross and Ruth Jones oh, with twenty-eight oh, points. Oh, oh. I've even got you a trophy, guys. Congrats and well done. Oh, wow.
Bloody marvellous. So well done, there's your trophy. A big thank you to all our amazing panel, to all of you for watching at home, all our special guests. Thank you very much indeed. I'm Jimmy Carr. That was the Big Fat Quiz of the Year. Good night. Yeah.